Welcome back. I'm now joined by James Sinclair, CEO of Partyman Group and co-founder of Entrepreneurs Network. Good afternoon, James. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah, very good, thank you. Enjoying the business show here in London. Good, good. Very good to hear. So, uh, James, what I wanted to talk to you about uh, today was this idea of what makes an entrepreneur. And I want to do that by looking at your story. So going back to where it all started for you, um, hearing a bit about that, um, and how, I guess, your day-to-day -day life and activities now compare to where you came from, and what were the key aha moments for you? So maybe starting at the beginning of your story. Yep, so uh, I started off as a kids entertainer uh, when I was 16 years old and built this business up um, that, that we continue to run today called Party Man. Uh, it's a chain of indoor play centres, day nurseries, uh, outdoor attractions. We own a small theme park and a farm park, a chain of laser arenas. Uh, we started our own charity called Party Man's Magic Makers. But all our businesses, they all fit and help each other and uh, support each other. Uh, and that's what we continue to run uh, today. But really just to start off just by being a man. Magic man, mm -hmm. uh, I had a plan of the, a business that I wanted to build, uh, and every year we're getting closer and closer to building that vision of what I wanted to build. You know, I started uh, building with the end in mind. I knew that I wanted to get to opening our own attractions one day, and everything was a step towards getting towards the end. Yeah. And I think that that separates um, the the, the, uh, the good from the very good is when you can you know plan what you want to build at the beginning, uh, so that you can get through those dark days ahead. So you mentioned you've got this vision of building attractions. What was it about that? Why was that your vision? What drove you to want to do that? Where did that come so, from? I mean, I've always liked um, you know entertaining people, working with people. That's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, I've always loved performance. Um, and uh, I, when I was, you know, when I started off as a kid's entertainer, I realised that my hands made my income, uh, and I wanted to build something that was aside that. When I sort of worked this out, I was. 12 to 14 years old, that like, if I start now as an entertainer, that will give me the cash flow to start building a bigger business so it wasn't just all on me. Uh, and I, I worked that out in my teens. Um, and uh, yeah, I used to draw pictures of our branding and what our vans would look like when I was a teenager at school. So I was very into, you know, well, I knew what the end was that I wanted to build. All right. Lots of it. Completely so. dotted the I's and crossed the T's, but I had a plan of what the future would look like. You need to have a vision, don't you? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I think that a lot of people kind of have that that feeling. Maybe when they're younger, they've got a vision of something they want to do. They start drawing out logos, ideas, throwing things around. But you've obviously been very self-motivated to get there. What do you think is about you that kind of pushed you to where you are now? Um, well, I think we've all got different DNA. Let's be absolutely clear about that. Um, and, and I do think entrepreneurship is a DNA-driven thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think I had that DNA and then I've worked at it more and more. But, you know, I, I'm not naturally into exercise. Uh, I don't like doing stuff like that. But, you know, I'm getting a bit older and I'm getting a little bit chubbier. So I'm forcing myself to go out there and do some exercise. It's not my natural DNA. I can relate now, to I this. can learn to do it, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll never naturally enjoy it. I don't like doing it. I don't want to do it. But I know that over a period of time, I'll get better at it. But it's not my... I mean, I'm never going to be... Mo Farah or you know or Usain Bolt but I'll do a little bit but for entrepreneurship and building businesses and taking on untold amounts of stress and getting something from idea to reality I think I've got a bit of natural DNA and then over the years I've worked on that natural DNA so um, I don't, I, you know people ask quite often you know can you can entrepreneurship be taught or is it a natural talent I think we've all got natural talents in life whether it's we're good at cooking good at art good at singing um, good at entrepreneurship but then I think if you practice it, you can get um, good at it. But I think if you've got an underlying base talent, it is easier. I agree to a certain extent. I mean, DNA obviously comes from a heritage, right? It comes from somewhere. Is that in your kind of family background? No. Is it, it just came... No, no, no. Um, uh, personalities uh, in my family backgrounds. Uh, but, you know, none of my family have employed people or built businesses, no. Uh, there's some successful people in my family, sure, that have got brains and stuff, but um, not people that have uh, employed people and built businesses, no. So you're starting off very young, you've got this vision for making it big, um, yep. but you're doing some very hands-on stuff, right? You start off with magic. But as you grow that business, I guess, do you get further away from that hands-on stuff and into uh, a whole different set of skills that you need? And how, yeah, how was that for you? Was that something you wanted to do? Because for a lot of entrepreneurs, they grow their business into something different and it becomes something that they never thought it was going to be. 
and they leave behind the things they were passionate about. Is that for you or? Yeah, I, I mean, I think as you as you grow in business, you do different tasks and different things. But I've always wanted to sack myself from running my businesses. I want to build businesses. I don't want to run businesses. Um, you know, every now and then I dive back into the running and give my little flair on it and stick an oar in and say, I think we should be doing this, this, and this. But you know, an organisation needs a different clash of personalities. Uh, and what you don't want to do is clash those personalities. You do need a different personalities, but you don't want to clash them. Um, so you understand that if you're bringing in management into your business um, and you're going to lead the business, you've got to let management manage the business and they've got to let you lead the business. And uh, you know, good people need to be left to flourish and actually grow your company. And you need to understand those different um, steps. Now, if you're a control freak, you're going to find that difficult. Um, I'm a control freak on some stuff, but on the actual running of the business, um, I'm happy to let people that are better than me do it. And building those teams, was that something that came naturally to you, or did you find that a challenge? Well, yeah, or? because I, I couldn't wait to invert a team together. Yeah. Uh, and that's very different to lots of uh, business owners. They don't want to employ a team. Um, not everyone, but, uh, but most people are like, scared of employment, scared of uh, the cost of employment. I, I don't know if they're scared of someone being better than them, or, or you know, a cocktail of things. Uh, but I, I couldn't wait to get management in place. And, you know, and I think I, I owe a massive uh, debt to Richard Branson. I read, you know, one of the first business books I read was Losing My Virginity by Richard Branson. And, and that's the thing that I took away from that book, that Richard always invested into great people to run his businesses so that he could go and build them. And I've, you know, taken that from Richard when I was 16, read Losing My Virginity, and I've been you know, following that mantra ever since. So. Have, you met, have you met Richard Branson? No, I'd love to. All right, it's a dream. Yeah, I'd love to have a chat with him. How did you, so apart from Richard's book, how did you learn all the things you need to learn to run a business? Because there's a phenomenal amount. You get into things that perhaps are quite far away from the whole entertainment scene. Like you've got to think about legal, supply, all these kind of things. How did you get to grips with all of that? Well, I think it's a really good thing when you, you, you run a sole trade of business before you run a big business. Mm -hmm. So if you're a plumber, or, or in my case, a kids entertainer, you're a sole trader, uh, you're filling the fuel up in the van, uh, you drive into places, you're learning customers before the big stuff comes in, and you start building up you know, a little bit of practice there. But one of the best things entrepreneurs and business owners can do, like I did, was read books. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, read a book a week from success. In, in my case, I, you know, talk about that losing my virginity book. You invest on know, 10, 15, 20 pounds into a book, and you can get five hours with a multi-billionaire and listen to his insights. And I just took them and invested it into my little cloud company. Change your life. Yeah, and, and I think. But now you don't even have to buy the books. You get yourself on YouTube, like what we're doing here, and you can get insights into people that have been there and done it. And you can get insights into the people that have found miserably, and you can learn loads from that as well. But there's a there's a magic in making a start. When you make a start and you get out there and you start doing things, you can take that and you can learn from that. Um, and, 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 and good things start to happen. I made a start, a lot of other people that have made a start, they learn quickly. I did learn on the job. Um, you know, and uh, luckily I surrounded myself by not one mentor, loads of mentors, loads of other business owners that I asked for their advice. I read books, uh, I read newspapers with the business articles, and you take all those things and I implement it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a big difference. And that's the difference, isn't it? Lots yeah. of people will read these things and dream. I guess you had a dream and a vision, and then you just went out yeah. and made it happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Did you have a feeling at the start, a confidence that? The, the business could grow as big as it was? Yeah, or did it take you by surprise? Yeah, the older that you get, I think the less confident you get in some ways. Yeah, I agree with that. Bit, yeah. um, uh, the confidence you get as you get older is, I've been there and done it before. Mm -hmm. And the confidence you get is, the older you get that you know, actually, no matter what goes wrong, within a couple of weeks you've sorted it out. Mm -hmm. And that is a metric for stress busting. Mm -hmm. If you know that in two weeks time, everything's gonna be sorted out, why are we getting stressed about it? And but we've all got to get better at that. Um, a good friend of mine told me that the two week rule don't get stressed about it because in two weeks it'll all be sorted out. You've just wasted two weeks again, feeling horrible, tummy knots, and sleep loss. I've got a friend of mine who tells it slightly differently. He says, In 100 years' time, we're all going to be gone anyway, so what are you worrying about? And I find that perspective is fantastic. It's like, yeah, yeah. You're not going to be here in 100 years, who's going to care? You know, yeah. and you, you can let a lot of things go that way. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you, I don't think I answered the question there, did I? Um, it doesn't matter. We'll move on. It's fine. <laughs> we, were talking, we were talking about um, we were talking about growth. Did the growth surprise you, or did you know from the start that there was this potential for growth? 
no, I, I had that utmost confidence that I was going to build a big business. Yeah. And nothing was going to stop me from doing it. And I'm not done yet. Good to hear. What are the uh, the big stumbling blocks, the big mistakes that you feel like you made along the way? Maybe there were lots, but maybe the big ones that you feel that really stood out, that you learned from the most, that if you say to other people, that's something that they can learn from. Yeah, so, so my, my toughest thing in business was always raising the right finance to grow my business in the early years. Because um, you know, I never wanted to be venture capitalist or private investor back I wanted to do it on my own um, so I found that difficult in the early years um, and then it's affording the good people that you need mm -hmm. having the right scale to carry on paying for them in the different levels of business um, you know when, when you turn a billion pounds and you make 50 million or 100 million pounds profit it's very easy to attract great people to come work for you and actually the bigger your business gets the more that you attract great people that's your that, that want to go and work for a company where there's more opportunity for them. Um, so th those are some of the challenges, but you've, you've got to get through them. I'm not the first to have got through them. Plenty of others have. Um, and if once you get through them, the good stuff happens. It's easier to run a much bigger business and easier to run a really small business. Running a medium-sized organisation is a very tough place to be. Okay. Do you, do you consider yourself, do you feel like you're successful, like you've been successful? Because you talk about you're not done yet. So if you're, if you're not done yet, have you reached that level of success that you wanted to get to? And, and, and by not being done, where are you trying to get to? Well, I want to build, uh, I want to build my profile as a business owner so that I can do stuff for other businesses and my businesses. I want, you know, I want to get my profile to such a stage where I can pick up the phone to the Prime Minister and be able to say, look, I think you're being unfair about this and I think this policy is wrong and it's going to hurt the UK PLC, I want to be able to say those things. Uh, I want to be able to open doors for my companies. Um, but I, I want to do good. I want to, there's a lot of good that I want to do. So I started a charity on my 30th birthday, uh, so that you know, as, as my wealth grows in the future, you know, 10 to 15 years, I can put loads of that money into there, do some really good stuff. I'm passionate about helping people, um, and I realise, especially with my charity, if I've got a bigger profile, the stuff that I can do for my charity through the network that I've got uh, and help them because our charity helps kids that need our help. Um, you know, all that stuff becomes easier with profile, uh, and I think it's easier to build profile than brand. You know, um, you look at Walt Disney, build the Walt Disney kids show on TV that allowed them to build the Disney brand you know it's easier to build on a personality than a company's personality and then over a period of time the brand company brand will take over um, so you know I, I, there's lots of things I want to do um, yeah okay Still got lots to learn. good can we talk about the entrepreneurs network yeah yeah a little bit so what is that where has it come from what is it trying to do so entrepreneurs network uh, is really um, a business coaching organisation that works one to many. We help business owners by networking them with other business owners. We do supper clubs in London. We do big events for business owners a couple of times a year. Um, we teach where we've got business coaches on the phone that give our members advice. We give marketing advice. We help raise finance. We learn about systems and processes, building margin in your business, getting your business ready for exit. We do a catalogue of good stuff for business owners. Um, and it's a business training organisation, that's what it is, and a community for entrepreneurs and like-minded people. And that's growing lovely, uh, and I love our members, and uh, we've got a great community. I do some one-to-one -one, uh, work with some business owners on how they can help grow their business as well. So there's some really good stuff happening, yeah. Okay, and is it a mix of different business types? Yeah. Is, so it's not just a in the area that you're working in? Yeah, of different business types. From plumbers to chiropractors to accountants to barristers and everything in between. And how have you found that these people have, have, have found you and come to the entrepreneurs? Well, entrepreneurs now? you know, every day I film myself, uh, uh, a right guy now. called Chudders who films me running my companies every day. Um, and then he puts that out as a 10 minute documentary on LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube uh, and people find us there. I produce a magazine on business every month called Engage uh, and I write articles, I've wrote two business books, one called The Millionaire Clown, one called The Experience mm -hmm. Business uh, and all those things are helping people to find us. Okay, 
So this moves to a slightly different topic again. I speak, I speak at conferences and people. Okay, good. That. And you're, you're doing a keynote. Well, here, right? not one. How did that go? Two yesterday, brilliant. Yeah. And I'm doing another one later on after you. Did you get any good questions? I don't. I didn't do Q and A today. I just talked. Yeah. But uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Being the man asking the questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about mentoring because you mentioned that you surrounded yourself with quite a few mentors when you started out. How important was that for you? And what would you, uh, what advice would you give to someone just starting out about mentoring? Because it's often a subject that people don't really talk much about, and yet yeah. they recognize it's very valuable. Yeah, I didn't have one mentor, but yeah. you know, I had lots of business owners that I turned to and asked for advice. And here's the th good thing about business owners, when they meet someone that has got that natural talent that they can see, um, you know, help will come if you put your hand up and say, hey, I, I've got this idea, uh, can you just, you know, spend a few minutes going through it, um, you know, and uh, they'll give you some help, you know, there'll be people that you know in your community, um, the, the, the danger that people have when they ask for help is they turn to their family, you should only ask your family for help if they're super successful business mm -hmm. people. So if your uncle is Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, yes, then solicit their so. advice. But if they're employed people that have never run a business and only hear the nightmares of business, then do not listen to any of their advice. You only want to go to people that are experience-based, not theory-based, mm -hmm. uh, and that can be very dangerous and that stops people from going. Because most of your parents say, don't do this, I mean, oh, you'll have to pay all the wages, you'll have all the taxes, you know, all the paperwork, blah, blah, blah. blah. You don't want to listen to that, you want to listen to people that have run a business, that have been successful in business, period. I guess it's the difference between people having your best interests at heart and people having your business's best interests at heart. And it's not the same thing. And your family, obviously, they want you to be happy, but they don't necessarily give you good advice about how to set up and run the business. Yeah, well, because, you know, 80% of businesses fail in the first five years. So the odds are stacked up against you. And that's, you know, people hear all this stuff. Uh, and running a business is very tough, you know, and getting a business to be super successful is very, very tough. 70% of businesses in the UK don't even pay VAT. So if you're paying VAT, you're in the top 30% uh, in terms of size, for sure. Um, and, and it's a very tough place to get through. Um, and um, that's why you need to listen to the right advice from experience-based people. Okay. How important has the whole social media thing been for you? Because obviously that's exploded in the last 15 years or so. You mentioned a lot of stuff there that you're doing online with vlogging, etc. Yeah. How, how important has that been for you for building a profile, building a brand? Yeah, I think, I think social media plays a fantastic part of your marketing mix. We still do loads of offline marketing. We still send a million leaflets out a year. Um, we still send stuff through the post. Um, and you know, we still believe in that stuff. I think social media is a really good thing, but it's got noisier. There's more people on social media, everyone's on there. So we've got to have a man follow me around with the camera. We actually try and do offline stuff to get our online presence built up. Like, have you got any examples? So I would like to do a TV show uh -huh. about business on one of the main TV channels just to boost my online presence. Mm -hmm. So if I was on ITV News, for example, talking about business, I would do that to build my online presence because I think it's less noisy on the main channels now. You know, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, there's everyone competing for attention. Um, so, you know, that's why you've got to be consistent in delivering. You know, lots of people are now getting disheartened with social media. They've got one post up and one and it doesn't work. Uh, the, the consistency and the continuality of it needs to be much higher than ever before. And good stuff has to be put out there. You've got to be a content marketer now, not just a marketer for sales to win on social media. So you say you've got a vlogger who follows you around. Have you found that you have in your team now people who are just looking after your social media profile, just making sure that that works yeah. and kind of growing that as much as yeah. possible? And you think and, that's critical? And I can see more in the future yeah. coming in. You know, you know, Charles films me every day. We post stuff on LinkedIn, Instagram. So you know, we've, it's unusual to have one full-time person just following the CEO of an organisation around putting stuff out, but I actually that's really important. Um, and then it gets done, it's consistent rather than me going into a meeting forgetting to do it. It happens like clockwork every single day of putting content out. Yeah, but we've been doing it over a year now. We've only got just over a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We've put out 230 plus videos, podcasts over the last 12 months. And we still haven't broke through, but we're gonna keep going, we're mm -hmm. gonna keep doing it, and hopefully uh, we'll get to the stages of 100,000 subscribers and a million views. 
It's a massive challenge, isn't it? Massive. It's yeah. harder and harder. But I think, look, if you do it every day and you do it well, like what we're doing, it's not if, it's when. Mm -hmm. So we will break through, it's just we've got to keep going. Okay. Uh, the last few minutes here, you mentioned you did your keynote speech earlier. Have you done two? Is that right? And you've got one more to do. One three, one more to go. Is there any uh, key messages you wanted to mention from your keynote? No, all of the messages are key. Uh, talk about uh, today. I, I've been speaking about quite about building a business rather than a job. Um, lots of people just build a profitable job, um, and then they get to exit their business via retirement, and then no one wants to buy their job. And so they've spent all those years in building a business that's really only a job. And I'm trying to say, look. Build a team, and then at least you've got something to sell at the yeah. end. Okay. Great. I think that's a really good message to end on, James. Thanks very Thank much. It was really much. good to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. Too. Thank, Thank you. you.